Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Today, something eh, kind of special, something that I said that I wasn't going to do, and I'm still not doing it, technically. What am I talking about? I'm talking about color grading. I loathe color grading. I mean, I hate editing as it is. I've always had a problem with like editing my photos and editing my videos. Throughout my time as a photographer, a lot of times, if we did a special project, like a wedding or something like that, I didn't edit the photos. My wife edited the photos because I freaking hate editing. It is a problem. It's something that I've struggled with over, you know, two decades. I'm finally getting to the point now where I do a little bit of editing. As far as the still pictures go, I want to get as much right done in camera. I've said it once, I'll say it again. I am not a digital illustrator, I'm a photographer, and I like to get everything right in camera. With the advances in technology and the editing programs and people making LUTs and people making presets, it's allowed me to continue being lazy. And I have gone through and bought eh, not a ton of presets. I mean, just because everybody's got a preset pack out doesn't mean I'm gonna buy it, but there are a very few photographers that I actually really like that I think have done really good presets. As far as LUTs go though, that's color grading and I don't color grade. I set pretty much everything that I can in camera when I'm doing video and I don't do any color grading whatsoever. None. I'm still not going to, but I have relented and all the rage now is this S Cinetone stuff, you know, that you can get on all these uh, cinema cameras and everything. And now Sony has released it that everybody was crying that they wanted it for the A7S III. Well, you know, as usual, a bunch of people went in there and completely took it all apart and figured out this, that, and the other thing so that you can sort of try to match it on the camera that you have. So Yankee Cowboy sent me the settings last night that he saw and recommended the, uh, what's a guy called, Evershot. And I went through and I actually saw a couple of his videos and how he showed how he matched his a7 III to his a7S III pretty much perfectly. So I don't know, I guess it's all the rage with the kids these days, so I figured I'd give it a try. So I went through on the Cinerig A6600, did all the settings, then I went on to the run and gun, and I also did it there. I'm also doing gray card for video. I also have a, a you know the black, gray, and white one for photos. I don't use that all that often because I don't do photo shoots. Anywho, so I had that gray card and I used my monopod and the magnet from my Rode Wireless Go transceiver and I clipped it on there and put it at the right height so it was centered because it's like, I, I mean, unless somebody knows a way that I don't, uh, you know, setting the white balance, a custom white balance on, on the camera for a video, you have to be back there to get that target centered and you have to push the button on the back. All that, the cameras are too far away for me to do that. So I just sort of, you know, Frankenstein rigged something up there to do it. I, I, I don't know if you can use the Sony imaging app to control that to set the white balance. I haven't looked into it. I don't like that app anyway so I probably won't even bother I can just do it this way and here we are so I'm looking at the two screens and let's go through all the settings I have the Cinerig a6600 it's set to 1.4 as usual the custom white balance and I used picture profile 9 which I altered with Evershot's settings for fake s Cinetone. I don't know how else to put it and I basically did the same thing on the A6600, but this one, obviously the Cinerig has the 16 millimeter 1.4 Sigma, and I went back to the 30 millimeter 1.4 Sigma for the run and gunner. But what I did was I changed the angle of the tripod so that it still doesn't stick out as far, and I moved it back. A little bit so that I can get more in the screen so it more matches that 24 millimeter that I was using with the 18 to 105. I, it just using the 18 to 105 with f4 when I've got f1.4 on the Cinerig it just it was just too far off so I have now moved it back but I really didn't cut into my space at all because I turned the tripod legs. I'm sure you care. 
So now that camera settings matches this camera settings. Everything is the same. We're good to go. So here you go. I, you know, I have my photo deox LED panel up here to my slight left. And then I have my aperture MC that I got right here off almost at a 45. Well, you can see when I do this, how the shadow and, and how my hand lights up right there. And then of course I have the other newer Aperture MC up there in lemon yellow, my fairy light. I have two of those Hugo lights for uh, you know Philips Hue and Hugo is what they call it. So I just call it Hugo and then I call the other one Ron from Bob's Burgers because those two crack me up. So yeah, Hugo the original is downstairs like above and behind my TV and Ron is behind me. I'm sure you wanted to know that too. All right, so that's it. Everything is all set up. I, I, the cameras are pretty much matched as far as picture profile, white balance, uh, f-stop, all that stuff. And of course it's set to 1 50th because I'm doing 24p and uh, 24 frames per second and I'm shooting 1080p. Now, I did try to switch that up because I was watching Jevin Doey and he was talking about the difference between 24p and 30p. And you know how I've gone back and forth on that. So I thought, well, let me see what it looks like in 30p. The problem is when you're shooting with the a6600 into the Atomotion Ninja 5 through the HDMI, you can't do 1080, 30 frames per second. You can do 24, you can do 60 and that's it. The only way I can shoot 30 frames per second is if I bump it up to 4K. I'm not doing that because the 4K files were just too big and it took me that much longer to edit and render and everything. And I was just whipping through hard drive space. Wham, wham, wham. So 1080p, 24 frames per second it is. And I'm fine with that. I haven't had any complaints about what it looks like. And you know, I think it looks fine. The other thing that's been sort of brought to my attention, and I get this because I have a lot of videos. I have a lot of videos. A lot of the stuff that I did was over a year ago. Some of it more than, you know, like almost two years ago. But when I really started redoing this stuff, it was last year around this time when I started trying to do the daily posting and I was doing all the testing and I was buying cameras and, and switching lenses and doing this and doing that. So a lot of that stuff is outdated. And I have a lot of comments because people are going back and looking at older videos and saying, dude, you know, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you try this? Or you should you should be doing this. And if you had gone on to look at later videos, you'll see that I've already changed it. I've already done that. I'm already doing that, what you've either suggested or I've tried what you've suggested and I, I don't like it or I've chosen to do something else that works better for me. So if you're watching my stuff, I'm not saying don't watch the older videos, but keep in mind that a lot of the stuff that I tested and that goes across the board for everything. The cameras, the lenses, the lighting, the software, you name it, I've changed it probably 20 times over. I mean, just go through and look at all the Devious Monkey uh, studio builds and see how different the back, you know, the background looks. I mean, I have painted this wall numerous times. I've drilled paneling into the walls. I've taken it down. I've changed furniture. I've changed which direction I'm going in. I've used green screen. I, you know, like I've been all over the place with changing stuff. And that goes for cameras as well. It took me a long time to get to the point of having a6600 a6600 ZV1 up there and and that's the other thing if you look at this overhead build Jesus how many times did I change that like 10 times before I got to where I am now so a lot of the stuff while I appreciate the suggestions and everything keep in mind you got to look at the most recent video to see how I've changed that I mean literally I did like okay it's all done the, the overhead setups done and that night I changed it again so that the next day it was different not only was it different the next morning, but then I'd get delivery of something. And by the afternoon, it was different from even in the morning. All I'm trying to tell you is that keep in mind that when you're watching my stuff, I have shot a lot of videos and I have gotten and gotten rid of and adopted new gear out the wazoo. So just try to look at the newest video and you can see that, yeah, it's all changed. Highlighting the biggest thing that I got a ton of comments on last night was the 
A6600 firmware update that caused my lenses to hunt, focus hunt. And, you know, someone said, hey, can you post some footage of that? And I was like, well, actually, if you watch the video right before this one that you commented on, you'll see the video that basically is what drove me over the edge and like, what the hell? how much focus hunting there was. So, you know, all I'm, all I'm saying is that, you know, I don't mind the questions and comments, but just keep in mind, you got to look at the videos and you can see what happens. And so I have, uh, let's get that out of the way right now. The firmware update on the A6600, they have not updated it. They gave me a stock crappy answer that I didn't like, that didn't fix the problem. After numerous changes to the studio, to the lighting, to the lenses that I used, to the settings that I did. Yankee Cowboy throwing comments at me trying to help me get it figured out. I think I got it figured out because I don't really think anything's hunting right now. You know, again, I have the uh, the focus assist on there so I can see that my eyes are demon red, that my beard is red and, and so on and so forth. So I know that I'm in focus and I know it's not hunting. Same with this one. Do I have different lenses? Well, I did have the 16 1.4 back then. The difference was it all came about in settings. I got around the hunting by changing my settings and it didn't come easily because I tried dozens and dozens of different combinations of gear, of where I put the camera, of what I did with the background, how I lit it and all that kind of stuff. But the, the bottom line is, is that the A6600 firmware has not changed what has changed is my setup and the settings on the camera so that it does not focus hunt for me most of the time now. Enough that I'm not gonna screw with it, I'm not badgering Sony to try to fix it for me, I'm not trying to revert my firmware, I'm just gonna wait for the next firmware update. Hopefully other people other than me have had the problem because I haven't really seen anybody bitch and complain about it too much, but hopefully they fix everything in the next firmware update if there is gonna be one. If not, I'm perfectly happy with the way these cameras are running and the way I'm getting footage. <sighs> okay, that's out of the way. Now, as far as the ZV-1 goes, with how I have this overhead setup, I am no longer using the crappy plastic metal TV tray. I have a nice, sturdy, like thick-legged steel contraption table with a nice wood top. I have a monitor stand, a single monitor stand that like it's seriously sturdy. So there's no wobble whatsoever in the overhead camera stuff. I have different lights now. I'm using that LED panel. I'm using my Aperture MCs. The lighting is perfect. And as far as all the cabling goes, I got the right cables with the right lengths. They're all cinched down. And I have the ZV-1 up here, which I had decided to keep. I took off the wide angle lens. Cause I noticed in one of those and from a comment last night, someone said, do you really need to use the wide angle lens? And when I looked at the, at the video, I thought, oh, I have the wide angle lens on there. I don't need that. There is no wide angle lens on here. I'm using the, the actual lens of the camera and I zoom in a tad to get basically just the table and frame. And you can see how much I have in the frame when I'm doing an overhead. There's quite a lot actually. The other thing was that once I realized when I started going through the settings that Dumb Monkey left on active stabilization, which I don't need because it's actually in a tripod head on a freaking sturdy monitor arm, I took off active steady shot and I got a whole bunch of real estate back. So that made all the difference in the world. And then I decided that I wasn't going to use manual focus. I can use the autofocus and turn on the, the, what do they call it? Like the product review or whatever the hell it is. Whatever it is that you can stick your hand underneath it and it comes into focus. You move it away and it goes back to focusing on what was a little bit further away. So I'm using that. And that's pretty much how it goes. And, and I've smallified everything. I've got it all down to everything on the one tripod other than what's on the table. The table is independent of all that. I've got a Feel World 5-inch monitor in front of me to hook up to the ZV-1 so I can see my overhead stuff right here without going like this the whole time. Everything's golden. I'm good to go. The gear's all set. The cameras are all functioning correctly the way I like them to. And today, I'm just testing that fake S Cinetone just to see what it looks like. And that, thank you, Yankee Cowboy. I was like, nah, dude, Screw that, I'm not doing any editing. You know how lazy I am. He's like, yeah, that's the beauty of it though. It's not, you don't have to color grade. It's getting it set in your camera in a picture profile. You don't have to edit it. It'll be right in the camera. And I'm like, 
<laughs> okay. So, you know, now I get it. And I went through and I changed that and that's what I'm looking at now. Everything looks great on the screens. So on the screen of the A66 run and gun and on the Atomos Ninja 5, it all looks really good. All the colors look really good. Now, we all know what happens when you're looking at shit on a tiny ass little monitor and then you pull it off into your gigantic 27 inch, you know, 4K, 5K screen, it might look different. I think it's gonna look fine. In fact, I think it's gonna look really good. That's all I wanted to do today. I wanted to play with that. And because I spent all damn day and most of last night doing those forms and redoing those forms because freaking Excel had the wrong formula or the formula was wrong or whatever, <laughs> all that's done too. So today I'm just waiting for coasters to come in on, on those emails if anybody else is gonna do that or if there's any other problems that I gotta submit and all that kind of stuff, but easy Friday. It's supposed to rain, I guess. I don't know if it's going to. That's why I decided to do this project in studio today for today's video. And I'll go from there. Okay, ton of shit that I just said there. Bottom line is, all my stuff works the way I want it to. All the stuff that I have is all the stuff that I've always wanted. It all works great, it all looks great. I appreciate everybody going through my videos, old and new, offering suggestions, dropping comments, keep it coming. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. Get a hold of me. And I, everybody knows that's commented me. I get back to you right away. Sometimes I don't answer Yankee Cowboy stuff because we talk offline. But for the most part, if you leave me a comment, I'm getting back to you. All right? Because I appreciate the interaction. And it's all been relatively positive. You can stop posting freaking porn sites and all that shit because I'm just going to delete the comment. But other than that, it's all peachy. Okay. So that's it. That's all I got for you today. As always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.